trying to grab that promotion, trying to get ahead on the job, be wise. Hey y'all, it's me, Lynn Danielle Treasure, coming to you today from my kitchen book nook. And I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about competitiveness, being competitive. Um, boy, and I've got something in my eye. I mean, my eyes are dry from allergy medicines and stuff, but, and you guys know that. I think I've told you that before. But um, the timing of this is always so, uh, ooh, okay. So, competitiveness in schools, in jobs, in relationships, competitiveness. Are we competitive? Heck yeah, people are competitive. When people are competitive, that means that they do whatever is necessary to make themselves look good and come out on top and have an advantage over others. On the job, there's a right way to be competitive, I think. When I say right, I mean fair and equitable where no one gets hurt. You all come out, you know, you may come out with some advantage, but no one gets hurt in the process. That mean-spirited type of um, competitiveness is when people try to, I don't know, uh, rain on your parade. They may try to take credit for what you've done. They may try to diminish what you've done. But people are competitive. So those of you who are uh, freshly out of college and you're going into the workforce, you just have to realize and know that. So first off, have your high level of expertise that marks you far out from the others on the job where people can rely on you for information, trust what you say, and have confidence in your knowledge base, okay, and in your ability to perform. So become a, an expert in, in whatever relates to your job. All right, so on my job, I am a teacher. I'm also a certified reading specialist, and I enjoy teaching reading. I'm also a certified language arts teacher, and I enjoy teaching writing. So the thing that you do and that I did was I went back to school to get more certification in, in that field. Got more knowledge, more experience with different aspects of teaching, reading, and writing. So if you need to take classes, maybe attend some professional development workshops, but whatever you need to do to become an expert, do it. So in order to look your best, be your best, uh, perform at your best and this thing is uh, bothering my eye you're gonna have to be competitive now those of you who may have landed a new job I know a couple of people this summer they landed new jobs in this tough economy and you're gonna have to have an edge yes you're gonna have to dress professionally you're gonna have to um, you know, just kind of pay special attention to the quality of you and everything that you produce on that job, especially being new and being the last one on the totem pole, the first one out the door if they have to do layoff. So look your best, get a lot of rest, eat right, take care of yourself so that you have the energy to put in the extra time if it's required of you. And just know that you want to be a real good team player. You want to build friendships on the job. But your main number one priority is you. Making sure that everything you do on that job represents the top quality, highest level of your productivity. You know, if you are working on a project or you have written a paper, or you are uh, writing curriculum or helping to develop some uh, new program, let your colleagues know that, share that information. It's not necessarily bragging, it's informing them. And that way, you know, their level of respect for you will rise when their estimation of you rises. And their estimation rises when they feel that you are deserving and contributing. So, you know, just share, keep, keep that in the forefront. And these were some things that, um, you know, first coming into a job, you need to know these things. 
you need to know how to position yourself. You know, and depending on the political climate and, and the social climate of, of where you're working, you know, you may need to go in um, very assertively and, 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 and have that stance where you're always in the forefront being seen or known. Or you may, you know, it's going to be important for you to know whether you should go in more subtly quiet, learning, watching, and then sharing at the appropriate times instead of seeming like you're trying to hog the spotlight. So become an expert, you know, whether that means going back to school, share what it is that you're doing so that you are seen as an asset. Okay. That makes sense, doesn't it? Now, All I'll right. tell you my story. So when I came out of um, college, you know, fresh into the job market, um, it was during a time of a recession. And so I was able, you know, I was really blessed and fortunate the timing of when I started teaching. Um, there were some programs set in place bringing our city together as far as breaking down racial barriers and in doing that this program allow for more diversity when it comes to race ethnicity and all so that opportunity was a good opportunity for students and for teachers those who were uh, going into the teaching field all right so but you still had to be competitive you had to know your stuff you had to know when to ask for help. You had to be present yourself in a good, you know, in a good light. And then you had to realize the necessity of building, you know, relationships. So, and, and I did well on some of those and then I flopped on some others. So, I mean, and that's just how you do when you're young and you don't really have a mentor. You kind of figure it out on your own. So, I think, y'all like my pink lipstick? I think that um, getting a mentor is extremely important. If you can find some professor or some counselor from your university or college who is willing to talk to you and, and you know, give you the information you need on how to acclimate yourself to your new job, then that's going to really help you. Um, they can they can give you the heads up on the political climate of the place where you're going to work the you know office politics so that you aren't breaking any of those unwritten rules um they can even give you feedback on which employees are the ones that make the difference they are listened to they make an impact and then those employees who are considered the f-ups and for I mean for legitimate reasons f-ups not just because you know someone doesn't like them but people who you should avoid okay all right so competitiveness making good decisions you know presenting yourself well get enough rest love yourself and it all work out all right so that's my video for today any questions any comments leave them there and be sure to rate my video thumbs up and subscribe. All right, I got to go. Got to take out the trash. It stinks. good there be good at what you do okay and what was the other one I said hmm. I don't know <laughs>